Shot more threes so far this season than each of the last two seasons. Markel Fultz, a.k.a. Marksman. Markel Fultz has a jump shot. What is your thought of this man, Markel Fultz, the former number one overall pick, the man who's in his sixth NBA season, and I think he's only like 24? Yeah, he's a great player. Well, he's a phenomenal attacking the rim. He's like a 50% inside the arc shooter. Gets to the free throw line, shoots like 80%, and like plays, is like a top 10 defensive point guard. Um, no, he's shooting 65% from the free throw line. No, but like the last two seasons, like he was in 85. 26 games. <laughs> 26 game sample size, bro. No face. Yeah, it's, it's not, that's not, as for him being a good free throw shooter, no, definitely not. I don't need him to be a, a good, a great free, how's that, a great free throw shooter? I think he can get over 70, which is fine. I think he's a great player. It's an enticing intrigue. Was Chris Dunn in this draft class? Sounds right. So the top two guard point guards in this draft class are like, like underachieved. I think Chris Dunn was earlier. Markel was 2017. Chris Dunn was. I'm trying to think, but continue. What are you going to say? What's your problem with Markel? Why do you think he's never going to improve? I I don't. I I don't. I I think he's around his ceiling. I mean, I don't. That, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. He's still 12, four and five, steal and a half. He's a great defender. I think he's ceiling is like 15, six and six. Like yeah. that. That's a, a low ceiling. The high ceiling is him being like a 27 and seven guy. Yeah. That's high ceiling. Like if everything works out, he gets a shot. Like twenty-seven to seven, borderline if not all-star. More realistically, he becomes a fifteen point per game guy who shoots like 35 percent from three, dishes out five assists, and grabs like five boards and averages over a steal a night. Like has a positive defense rating. Yeah, it works for me. His comeback story is great. Yeah, a lot of hype like, around him at Washington. So. I think at the very least, he's an above average starting point guard, but not an all star. And then his ceiling at this point is fringe all star, borderline all star. If everything goes correct. But more realistically, he's just above average starting caliber point guard. Yeah. Which isn't bad. Again, like he's one yeah. of the like top 20, 30 point guards in the NBA. I'm curious what his future holds. He's got, he's also the match. He got him a great deal. It's like 15 mil a year. Salary cap jumps in. He's basically going to be making like pennies on the dollar. Yeah. As long as you, he keeps producing and not getting hurt. Can I ask you honestly, where, what was your thoughts in that draft? Like how unbiasedly, like if you can recall, like how, what was your mind like in that draft? Cause that was I, when I they traded. Remember. It was the year that they traded the pick. The The Celtics had the first pick, and then they traded it to the Sixers, and the Sixers moved up. Oh, so like Tatum? Yeah, it was Tatum because the year before they took Brown, the Celtics, and the, the there wasn't a really a number one consensus pick in this year's draft. It was just like by fit because it went Fultz. Who was second? I'm oh, Lonzo. Lonzo, and then it went Tatum. And... Like, supposedly the Celtics were going to take Tatum regardless. And I just remember just, like, I don't know. I I just felt like Mark Hull, Markel, like, blew up on the scene. It was just a weird draft. I thought Markel was going to be good. I honestly thought Markel was going to be good. Yeah, I thought he was going to be a stud. <laughs> like, I had no, like, like question marks on Markel. I, I was like, he's a pretty solid player. And... Interesting. It's interesting. I want to know if the Celtics would have taken Markel Fultz with the first pick. Yeah. I mean, I think Isaiah was their point guard, so I don't... Because Lonzo was a guaranteed always to go to LA. Everyone was like, it's... It, it was almost like storybook written that, like, Lonzo Ball was going. But, yeah, he's going, to, he's going home. Staying home. Yeah. Let's go over to Thomas Bryant, who has been phenomenal filling in for Anthony Davis. Have you been watching him? 
But yeah. Dude, he's looking like the guy who earned that big old contract with a, the Wizards. He's literally made Damian Jones obscure. This guy's the perfect.